then I want to move into the show and talk about something that I thought was interesting because it definitely marries up to my actual scene report that I would kind of share and just my real life experiences being outside. So this is taken from the Business Techno Instagram page and I guess they were at ADE or somebody associated with them was at ADD, ADE, sorry, the industry type thing that happens in Amsterdam. I'm not really too sure what the point of that thing is actually. I'm not too sure if it's an it's industry thing just to kind of, you know, for them to all suck each other's dicks and wank each other off or if it's actually something that's integral to the scene overall. But in general, a lot of kind of industry stuff comes off the back of it. Similar to that thing they have in Ibiza, I forgot what it's called. Um, there's another thing in Ibiza too where people, you know, where old white guys sit on the panel and talk about dance music and pontificate about booking fees and whatnot and do their very best to not be diverse in their bookings oh no actually they talk about diversity and inclusion and sustainability but then they go back to their clubs and do exactly the same thing more Ricardo Villa Lobos please 20 hour sets thank you very much but anyway um, Business Techno shared these two takeaways that they received or they got from ADE which I thought very much married up to my real life experiences number one takeaway was the clubs are struggling in Europe. One of the reasons being if competition from festivals worldwide. I'm definitely somebody who can agree with the fact that clubs are struggling in Europe. As I've been to where I've been to clubs mainly in Berlin, obviously here in London, but that's still kind of Europe in that regard. And I've definitely seen a dip in terms of the people who are outside and at parties. And even just anecdotally, for the people that I, because usually whenever I've gone to Berlin, d these days not so much because I just kind of keep myself to myself. But the times I have gone, I've been able to maybe link up with some friends who I know who work in bars and restaurants and stuff. And then you end up bumping into other people who you then end up adding on Instagram and end up kind of being your social media friends. Or somebody you might just bump into in a club in London who says, yeah, I live in Berlin. If you're ever over there, come and hang out. And usually those things are said under the influence of drugs and alcohol, so it doesn't always work out, but sometimes it does. And for the people that it does, where you kind of feel like there is an actual connection there, I feel like those people were the ones that were flaking the most. Who were like, one of the last times I was going, like, hey, do you want to hang out? I'd be like, mm, not really. I'm not really in the party mood anymore. I've moved on to other things. I think some people actually said they don't even rave at all anymore. It's not something they're interested in, but if you want to hang out and just go to a market, I'm cool. I was like, whoa, that's pretty interesting to see people who I met who are kind of really about this life, really on the scene, really going to all these parties, putting on events themselves, DJing in other places, you know, and just kind of putting their face around. And then suddenly, in a blink of an eye, they've all kind of changed tact and decided to do other things going forward. A lot of it might be tied as well to the, there was a big, if I remember correctly, there was a big issue with like mental health in Berlin. I remember that being a thing during lockdown because you can imagine a city that's essentially built off the back of dance, music and clubbing closing down and people being in lockdown and not being able to go outside and express themselves and dance and take drugs and drink and shit or just you know listen to music it must have been really difficult to kind of handle so a lot of those people maybe decided for the benefit of their mental health overall even if clubs come back they're not going to come back because they want to just look after themselves better and maybe they took that time to reflect and maybe say the reason why they're maybe suffering is maybe because you know the clubs have become way too important and if that's in it you know and if you're at a point maybe where like you know clubs are really legitimately affecting your mental health especially if you can't go it might be there might be an argument in saying that maybe you should just not go in general and try and fix the parts of yourself that need those places in order to be whole which i mean because it's a bit much it's like it's like whole it's like hanging your entire hopes of life on one person and a partner it can become toxic very quickly so that might be an issue in that regard but my general thing that i've kind of hung my hat on and something that i'm definitely going to stand by in terms of my pov just again from a punter's point of view and somebody who's kind of been out and about a lot is i think a lot of this has to do with brexit and also has to do with kind of, you know, a lot of people basically leaving, especially the United Kingdom or going back to their native countries. So especially, in, in, you know, here in London, we have a big population of people who come from Spain, you know, Italy, France, and a few other places in Europe who kind of basically come here when they're in, you know, maybe late teens, early 20s to basically find themselves maybe, you know, further their career, further their education or just kind of be about in the scene. And usually those people tr trickle into different scenes, especially when it comes to club spaces. They maybe start their own nights. They maybe decide to become an artist themselves, set up labels, whatever it may be. Or they just become really enthusiastic punters. And if you know anything about London, you know, especially in the tech house side of things, the Italians and the French, they love that shit. Right? And they're there 
in their droves they get their friends to come over and visit them they stay in the same house they go out there and party and for the most part that crowd unlike the kind of all black sort of like double decker boot crowd that listen to dark techno that tech house crowd they spend money they go to parties and they literally you know want to give away their money whether it's buying pills on the dance floor or buying rounds or just buying food beforehand or afterwards they definitely spend money so if you can imagine all those people basically leaving and going back home to look after family members um to maybe you know uh, take, put their family affairs in order or maybe just to go, go go back closer to their family and friends in general because you know it, it, what's, what's the point of being in lockdown and being on your own here in london with no clubs to go to you might as well just go back home and do the same thing but at least with your family and friends near you and i think the um the, the fact that most of those people left and haven't come back has definitely affected the clubs overall in terms of their in terms of how full or not full they are and i can definitely feel it when i go out you can feel it a lot when you go to the smoking area i think i bumped into way more i would say quote unquote british people than i ever done beforehand and the whole techno tourism thing you don't really see it too often so i think a lot of that has basically affected places and like i said previously like i've been lucky enough to go to Berkheim in 2019 or 2020 i think it might have been just before the actual lockdown happened and then i went as soon after it kind of reopened or the lift the kind of bands or lockdowns was kind of lifted and you could definitely tell a big difference even when i went just before the lockdown happened there was definitely already a vibe shift there was definitely less people there um less real kind of let loose hedonism people are a little bit more i'd say hesitant to kind of really enjoy themselves because they weren't really sure what the future was going to hold all those things were kind of up in the air and generally it hasn't really recovered so and then i think the competition with festivals thing worldwide is a bit of a misnomer because for the most part festivals worldwide have always been where they are and there's probably more festivals than ever so the choices are flipping you know there's unlimited choices and they are a lot of money so now in this kind of you know in this economy we're in at the moment with a recession going on at the moment i just can't i just can't believe that there's an abundance of people who are going to be buying tickets for instance i was talking about it before in your pod that flipping gas and Bray put their prices up right to 330 pounds or something and i was arguing hey primavera is much better value even if I'm right or wrong, I can't necessarily see a person who would gone to go to Glastonbury and also go to Primavera in the same year. You're basically spending nearly five grand, you know what I mean, just in terms of going there, you know, split between two places, I'd imagine. So I don't really see that happening in a, in a kind of recession. People are going to probably hold on to their money and do things locally or just do what some of my friends do and hire out an Airbnb and just, you know, get absolutely wasted in there for the most part. So I'm not very sure that's necessarily true. And then the second observation that they took from ADE was as follows. Visuals are becoming more important for music events, prompting the question if artists should focus on music and keep attracting enough people. And this is something I've noticed also, especially in London, when it comes to promoters like um, Labyrinth, who do a lot of stuff with Innovision, who are obviously doing an event with Kind of Music in a couple of weeks, I think, or maybe next week here in London. And they they kind of go a, a long way to try to add those kind of elements into their parties. You know, I can complain that the fact that they don't post set list, I can complain maybe the venues aren't the greatest, but in terms of the production of the actual event, they try some things. The, the recent world thing we went to, where we went to see um, Henrik Schwartz and Arm play, they had a, they had like a, weird kind of vip type section thing that they were testing that would i but i all accounts look like it was quite a bit of a success um they obviously had really cool lights and kind of displays on the wall i'm not sure if there were leds or whatnot but everything was kind of i felt like done on purpose with an actual vj or lighting technician person on on deck it wasn't just something that was a plug-in thing that linked up to the flipping mixer or the serato so there's a lot more investment going to things which i would imagine again would eat into your profits if you're a promoter it's not things that you're doing um with the i with the idea that they're going to add to your profits they're definitely going to take away from it and it's stuff that only certain people will actually acknowledge or even appreciate but overall when it comes to taking pictures and sharing those social media bits and having it be a little bit of a loop in terms of um you putting on those great events having people you know and putting on those great light displays which then encourage more people to take pictures which then encourage those pictures to get shared which then encourage more people to come to your next event so you know even though it costs you money it can maybe end up kind of benefiting in the long run 
but again not everyone can do it especially if you don't have the you know the the means to the space to maybe the place you're hiring doesn't allow it whatever it may be but i have seen a huge uptick in this and the most recent recent event i went to was dixon at printworks and that was a full-on light display you know what i mean that was from the led panels that kind of line up against the whole kind of corridor that is printworks the massive screen thing that floats above the djs when they're playing it was a whole entire light show they had like a whole team in that kind of section behind or right towards the back of printworks that are working diligently to keep those lights going and stuff or whatnot so definitely something i've seen people a lot more investing in which makes a lot of sense because it goes back to my first point if there's less people in clubs especially because of brexit or the all the kind of immigrants or foreigners out here um that were kind of you know trying to make a life here and now i've gone back and maybe decided hey maybe my hometown isn't as bad as i thought it was and the clubs are generally empty you're gonna have to make people you don't have to make them you have to make nice out more value for money and if it, you are appealing to brits or you are appealing to people who are kind of you know homebred and whatnot it's going to be difficult to get them out of their houses so you're going to have to make sure that their 30 pound that they're spending or they're gonna have to make sure they want to make sure that their 30 pound they're spending is going to go a longer way than just buying a ticket and basically seeing someone play on a black table with some pioneer decks on it. it's going to have to be more than that so i definitely get that idea going forward but it's interesting just to see that the same things i'm seeing in real time are being echoed by the people in the panel and this is across europe because these guys i would imagine represent or uh you know spokespeople for different you know countries and whatnot different areas around europe and i'm assuming every scene is different but there are some commonalities that sort of run between them so big up business Teshno for sharing that big up this is Teshno, business Teshno for sharing